Today's case is very sensitive, very sad, and involves the death of an innocent, young, beautiful 13-year-old girl, just shy, just a day shy of her 14th of her 14th birthday. So this case was majorly shocking, majorly sad. I cried a lot researching it. So just a little warning, just a little warning that if you don't want to hear about a young girl losing her life senselessly for absolutely no reason and being tricked to being murdered, this is not the video for you because it is that bad, that awful, and it is a short video. I couldn't find too much about this case. It is not going to be one of my longer cases, but this is an important one to talk about. Today, we are going to be discussing the brutal and senseless murder of Kelly Ann Tinius. Young, beautiful, 13-year-old girl, just a day shy of her 14th birthday. She was born March 5th, 1975, and she was viciously attacked and murdered March 3rd, 1989. What I could find on this case is this. Kelly Ann Tinius was dropped off on her street from her dad at about 3 o'clock p.m. Horton Street, Stream Valley, Long Island and they were just having a little quick conversation before she got out of his vehicle. She's, she asked her dad if she can go ice skating that same day, that same night, that evening. She wanted to go ice skating, and he said that Kellyanne would have to ask her mom. So Kellyanne hopped out of the car and went home where her and her brother Richie were there, and... She was just going to be babysitting her brother for like two hours. Her parents were going to be home at five. So it seems like something reasonable, right? It seems reasonable. You should be able to leave your 13-year-old kid at home and your 8-year-old kid at home for two hours and everything should be peachy. Everything should be fine. But that was not the case. The phone rings shortly after the kids are at home. This was a Friday night after school. So they get home around 3 p.m. and they get a phone call. Richie picks up the phone and it's John J. Jr. Gullub who lives five houses down or up the street, whatever you want to call it. From them. So he lived up the block only about five houses and he kept insisting to Richie that he wanted to talk to his sister, so he hands the phone to Kellyanne, and he hears Kellyanne say a couple things to John Jr., like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, I'll be there, and hangs up the phone, and then she tells Richie, hey, I'm going to go see one of my friends, a girl, like a girlfriend, and I'll be back shortly, okay? So she leaves, she leaves the house, and about 20, 30 minutes later, starting to get like a weird feeling like where's his sister like he just he kind of just feels like she should have been back by now she's kind of supposed to be babysitting him right so he goes out on the block now this is a suburb neighborhood and it was stated that there was about 23 to 27 kids on this block neighborhood of Horton Street so he goes and starts talking to the other kids have you seen my sister Kellyanne? And they all are pointing to the Gullub house saying, yes, we saw John Jr. open the door and Kellyanne go inside. And that's the last time anyone's seen her alive. It's one of the neighborhood kids to go and knock on the door with him. They knock on the door, but nobody answers and they are unsuccessful. They they are unsuccessful to track down Kellyanne. So Richie goes back to his house and phones John Jr. again a couple of times. Again, there was no answer. Five o'clock finally rolls around and Richie's parents arrive at home. So Richie tells his parents that Kellyanne left the house and all the kids that he talked to seen her go in the Gallup house. So. Kellyanne's parents go over there, knock at the door, 
and then the parents answer the door. The parents are at home now. So I'm thinking that there was probably the same kind of a span between when both parents arrived at home. I do not believe that the parents were home the first time Kelly Ann went to their house. So now the parents are home, they answer the door, and they say, no, uh, Kelly Ann isn't here. And then they ask their sons. See, they have two sons. They have John Jr., who is 14 years old, Kelly Ann's age, and then they have Robert. who is a massive 21-year-old bodybuilder who isn't even allowed to have a normal door on his room because he is that dangerous. And we will get into that in a little bit. Guys, yeah, so both the, if you can call them boys, the 21-year-old and the kids that, no, we haven't seen them. The two brothers, they haven't seen Kellyanne. They don't the two brothers denied seeing Kellyanne at all and claimed that they had no idea what they were talking about, that Kellyanne never came over. So they phoned the police. The police talked to the Tinyas family and then they talked to neighbors. They heard the same thing from everybody. All the statements led to the same conclusion that Kellyanne was last seen alive in Gallup House. So March 4th, they searched the Gallup house. This house, I'm gonna probably have a couple pictures up in this video, looked like an average house on the block. Nothing special, nothing out of the ordinary. It looked tidy on the outside. A well-groomed lawn, a well-trimmed home. But the house was cluttered to the max. The mom of the house, she was a hoarder, right? So every room was like pretty much stacked to the ceiling of like useless crap that she bought at garage sales, yard sales, the little tag sales at the store. She had it and a lot of it was the same things. So the police had... The police had to go through this mess and Robert was saying, yeah, no, I didn't hear anything. I was in my room with the music blaring. I didn't know anyone was even here. I was in my room the whole time. John Jr. claims me and my two friends, we went to play some football and go get some pizza at the pizza place that's like 20 minutes away or something, right? 10 or 20 minutes away. So they had tried to provide an alibi. Apparently nobody was in the home or something or nobody had knowledge. Robert was in the home, but he was in his room listening to music, which in hindsight, in retrospect, I'm, I'm sure Robert's music was very loud considering what happened to Kelly Ann, okay? The police found her body in the basement. They had to crawl on their hands and knees to sift through the because how badly cluttered it was. Guys, Kellyanne's body was mutilated and disfigured, dismembered. It was hardly recognizable and her legs were in something, her body was in something. It was disgusting what the police found, okay? Like part of it in a bay. Sorry, excuse me. Part of this young lady's body was in a bag. Part of her was in a suitcase. This is just very hard for me, you guys. This is just so gory and so gruesome and so horrific. So the police obviously collect all this, send it off to be analyzed. Again, Everyone in there is denying, denying anything, okay? So this case was pretty major because it was the first time that DNA forensic evidence was used to successfully convict someone. This was new. This was 89, you know? They're developing things. So this, after analyzing 
poor little, dear little Kellyanne's body and her clothes and everything. What Robert didn't realize is that his blood was on her clothes. They took samples from the blood that they found on her clothes and everything, and Robert's blood was a match, okay? It was a one in seven million match. And then he also left his bloody palm print somewhere, so that was a match as well. One of the grossest things is that his bite mark was actually embedded, embedded in Poor little Kelly Ann's skin in her buttock. Very disgusting, very sick. He denied it, denied it, denied it. But with the forensic evidence, there was no denying it. He was sent to jail, okay? He was done. Prison, bam. I, I think the trial was in 1990, February. The family had to like live with this for like a year before going to trial. The dad refused to hear anything about his daughter's condition, uh, the way she was murdered until the trial. I think little eight-year-old Richie took it really hard because he's the one who answered the phone. He was the one there. He's probably thinking, what if I done this? What if I done that? But at the end of the day, he was only eight years old. And this is just kids being kids on the block, neighborhood kids. <sighs> there was nothing he really could have done unless he... This is why we need to train the young people. Like, if you see something wrong, if you have a bad feeling, call the police. Call 911. This is why we also need to tell children, like, tell your parents where you're going, please. Even if you're a teenager, you guys, if you're watching this video and you're a teenager, I don't care how rebellious you are. You need to tell someone where you're going in case something bad happens to you. Being there and when you're planning on coming back and everything like that. It is good to let people know where you are, okay? Even if you're just going five houses down the street. It is a scary world out there. You never know who your neighbors are. You never know who's out there. So we have to be careful. We need to protect ourselves and our loved ones. This girl was a good girl. She was a virgin. She wasn't going over there looking for any kind of anything. She was probably lured there because it was almost her birthday. Everyone kind of knew that she had a little crush on this kid. Her parents had no idea because she never told her parents because he was kind of a bad boy. He did drugs. He picked on little kids. I have read that this, this John J. Jr. killed animals. There could be a reason behind his sick, twisted ways okay his brother robert it was later revealed that this guy didn't have a door on his room and he had a sheet hanging he's been molesting his little 14 year old brother for years robert is seven years older than john and he was molesting him orally and anally for years and his parents Finally, one day decided, I'm just going to take your door down. Kick that asshole out of your house. He's 21 years old. Get him out of the house. That's disgusting. That's horrible. It was a bodybuilder who was probably on steroids at the time. He ordered the whole situation. John, call Kellyanne. Get her over here. He probably did, in my opinion. We don't really know. These other three boys, John and his two friends that were over that day, they've never been charged for anything. Not even as accomplices. So, that, that is that, but everybody knows, if not just John, the other two boys were involved. 
there was actually an eyewitness, a six-year-old girl. And I found this out by, I believe, a guy named Steve Baker, who has his own YouTube channel. He did an amazing video about this girl. He said that there was a six-year-old girl who looked into the Gullah basement window and witnessed Kellyanne Tinius being tortured. This little six-year-old girl looked into the Gala basement window and saw Kellyanne being tortured by at least two people. Her grandma said that when her granddaughter came home that day, her little six-year-old granddaughter, that she was stoic, she wouldn't say anything, probably just traumatized. And she's been in therapy all her life because of that event when she was six, because of what she's seen in that basement window. This little six-year-old girl has been in therapy her whole life. There's also little pry marks on the back of her shirt suggesting that someone was poking her with an object to forcefully lead her down the basement stairs. Kellyanne's last minutes alive were torturous, terrifying. She was trapped. She wanted to get away. In her mind, she was probably just wishing she stayed at home, wishing she wasn't lured over there. Probably, probably the boys said they had a birthday present for her because it was almost her birthday. She was probably lured in the house saying, hey, come in, I got a present for you, and then bam. Robert actually claimed in court later that he was coming down the stairs really fast and Kellyanne was coming in and when he came down his flight of stairs he knocked Kellyanne down the basement stairs and then he said he was dragging her and slapping her trying to wake her up and when that didn't work he started punching and kicking her and that doesn't explain anything really that's just a lie upon a lie she had a bite mark on her buttocks. Her bra was tied, wrapped around her head, according to the Scott Baker video I watched on YouTube. And it's just all suggestive of you took her down there, you sexually assaulted her, you strangled her to death, you bashed her head around, you sexually mutilated her parts, I I believe that little six-year-old girl, I believe there is at least two people involved.